Hi there. It's a decent December day and Wendy's out here gardening with ducks. <laughs> Looking around for worms. Don't forget Simi. Simi oh, yeah. likes to be outside too. <laughs> but it looks like they're right about to settle down in the pool, huh? Take a little nap. They've already dirtied it with all their <laughs> dirty beaks. <laughs> yeah, we're going to move them over to the other clean pools. <laughs> this one's going to be emptied. About five seconds after they're out of it. <laughs> so it, it is around 40 degrees outside, so it's still about freezing. But well, we're testing out a new solution for keeping the pool water warm for the ducks in case it gets very cold this winter. Here we can see the heating element that Wendy has purchased recently. So this hopefully will work better than the heating element we used last year, which was a heating plate. And that didn't really keep the, all the water warm. It kind of created a small little puddle within the rest of the ice when the temperature dropped real low. So with this one, we have to keep it anchored down with a rock that we strapped around to it. Otherwise it would float, but it needs to be submerged in the water for, uh, for safety reasons possibly, but also so that it functions and it doesn't break. So we bought this and it comes with a device to suction cup it to an aquarium. It's actually for tropical fish. The minimum water level, there's a line right here. So all of this below this line needs to be stay submerged. It's okay to keep it submerged like this. Technically says not to use it in below freezing weather but I asked the people at the store and they said it was okay to do that in an outdoor situation. This is a new setup that we've been doing for the outdoor pool lately. We have these larger bricks that you know, aren't easily moved around by our duck's feet. The smaller bricks, they usually kicked away. And it would be a pile of mess into the pool by the time we came to see them in the morning. So this is working better and they're able to top in through you know, just us keeping the ground level here as we dug a hole for the pool. But they're able to get out of the pool by either flying or if they're lazy as they often are first thing in the morning. I mean, we all are, come on. And, uh, you know, they're able to use that to get out easier. And there's also a couple perching spots in there for them. Yeah, otherwise they fight over the steps because it's the only spot that they can stand. This is the pool. It's clean and clear and I put some veggies in here that they like to munch on. We pulled in the last of the green tomatoes and they've been ripening in the window so they've been having their way with those and I think this pool is around 70 gallons. I haven't measured it precisely but um, this thermometer is supposed to heat water up to 70 gallons. I have it set at 66 and I measured it several times and it seems as though it's keeping the water close to 60, um, at least in the half of the pool where the thermometer is. Um, in the other half of the pool, it depends on how cold it is outside. Yeah, the thermometer says not to store it in uh, below freezing conditions but I think if it's in water and it's heating the water then that would mean that we're not storing it in below freezing conditions it would just be if the water freezes over that might ruin the thermometer
Here's Big Poof standing on one of those bricks. So we may have an update once the weather gets colder. Goodbye for now. Hi, little poof. You're playing with that frozen water. Here we can see the top of the water is frozen off and she's playing with the little crystals. So how did this pool hold up? Thanks to this aquatic tank water heater that's for the right size of this pool. It's not frozen. The water feels pretty cold, maybe 40 or 50 degrees. With their winter down feathers, if it was warmer, it would be too hot for them. This is about as cold as it ever gets in Oregon. How are the other two ducks doing? Well, here's the other water heater we have, this water plate. It doesn't heat as much of an area of, or much of a volume of a pool. So if we use that as a bigger pool, it would only just keep one area of it unfrozen and the rest of it would still freeze over. But this pool by volume is about one third as much as that pool. And it seemed to work fine on this one, which is a dirty air pool because they were in this all day today. I gotta empty it and put fresh water in here now. <laughs> Ducks love just running over to wherever the water is emptying and playing around in it. And then once the water gets low, I swish it around. That kind of gets the sediment or duck waste to settle in one area of the pool and then I turn this off and empty it out. This pool is still pretty clean. Uh, once emptying it out, so no need to scrub it today. Now I'll make sure I hold this hose upside down and run through all the other hose parts to make sure it all gets inverted upside down and drains out the other end before I bring this inside to protect it from freezing. I wanna make sure I get all that stinky water out so that the water is not just spilling out on our basement floor. Now the water's filled up and you can see what the hot plate looks like. It's just plugged into an extension cord. Good morning, girls. All right, let's see how the big pool did with the water heater. All right, how did this big pool do last night during the snow? It's, it was set at around 70 with the tropical fish heater and now it is about 55 degrees. Yeah, I don't see any ice forming on here. No. Cool. Another thing that Wendy did in order to prepare for the winter was she bought a bunch of straw bales and built a couple of forts around the house like this. 
the, the ducks have a place to escape to when it really gets too windy uh, while it's snowing or having some kind of a winter mix. Last year we still had this other structure over here but this one when it was really windy and snowy the snow would just whip in the ducks would get miserable and cranky so we had to put them away into their duck house which you know calms them down but they don't really want to be in there all day. So now they have a couple of places like this to escape to and it even has uncovered grass for them to get if they want to. Here's the other one. It's just a very low cost solution using a pretty cheap tarp at the top. Maybe some old duck feed bags or other sorts of soil bags to cover it up, prevent moisture from seeping into the straw bales and having them sprout. One thing I would say about these tarps is to make sure to tie them down through the holes where they allow you know some kind of tie wrap to come in through. If you just weigh it down with some heavy bricks that will start ripping there after just a few short ones. And once it starts ripping, you're gonna have plastic leaking all over your yard. We like to place these forts just underneath the window so that we can look outside and see the ducks. And here they are from our basement window. So we can always keep an eye on them. Wendy says she'll even open up this basement window when it gets too cold if we want to give them some extra warmth from the basement. Our basement is not heated. It's about 50 degrees down here in the winter, so it's nice to be able to store things down here like vegetables or a case of beer, you know, that doesn't need to go in the fridge right away. Here's the ducks underneath the other fort. They're just sleeping in there. So with this video, I tried to take a different format of showing the ducks a lot more while talking rather than having us in front of the video. Let us know what you think in the comments. Do you like this? Do you like a little bit of both? Do you like the other way better? Either way, thanks for watching.